What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to create our own custom format specifiers for our Python classes. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to create custom format specifiers for our Python classes in this video today. Now, as you can hear, I'm a bit sick, so my voice is suboptimal. I hope you can ignore this and still benefit from watching the video. So custom format specifiers basically means we can decide how our objects are going to be represented, how our objects are going to be displayed, depending on format specifiers that we provide. So we already know how this works for basic uh, values. So if I have an F string here, and I say my value is, and then I have some number here, 155, 463, for example, I can use a colon to format this number in a different way. So I can say, for example, point to F to only uh, show two decimal places. So in this case, I would now get 155.46. I would not see the three anymore. Or I could say something like uh, zero 05. So colon zero 05 to have leading zeros. Uh, in this case, this is useless because I already have six characters. So I would have to do zero 09, for example. And then I would get leading zeros because I only have seven characters. So the rest is filled up with zeros because then we have nine characters. Um, so this is what a format specifier basically is. We have after the colon something that indicates how the value that we have here should be represented, how it should be displayed. And this works for numbers, this works for strings, this works for dates, and it also works for our own custom classes if we define the respective dunder method. So as an example here, we're just going to use a person class first. I'm going to give you a second example, which is going to be a little bit more useful uh, in a second here. But the person class now is just going to have an init method. So a constructor with a name and age parameter self dot name is going to be equal to name self dot age is going to be equal to age. Um, and then we're going to define how this object or how an instance of this class should be displayed. Now we can do that in general using the representation dunder method. So just def underscore underscore repr. And then we can return something that will be uh, displayed when we just print a person object. So for example, I can even put a constant string like hello world here, print, uh, or actually first, I need to create an object p equals person, let's call the person Mike, let's say Mike is 30 years old. And then if I print Mike, we can see that the values that I provided are ignored, we just have hello world here, because that is what the representation function uh, or representation method returns here. Of course, I can do something more useful as well. I can provide an S string here. I can say something like name colon equals self dot name or not equals name colon self dot name and then uh, H colon self dot H. And then I would get name Mike H 30. Now, this is just a general representation. This is without format specifiers. If I go ahead now and I try to print this as an F string um, and I say, if I just say P, of course, I get name Mike H 30. But if I now try to add a format specifier here, it says unsupported format string pass to person underscore underscore format underscore underscore. So this method needs to be defined by us. So what we can do now is we can define this dunder method format, which also takes a parameter format specifier or format spec. Um, this format specifier parameter decides what uh, or or is exactly what we put after the colon here. So if I say something like just name, for example, this would be what I pass to this function here. If I say something like, um, I don't know, Greek to print it in Greek letters, for example, this is what I would get here as a string. So whatever I want to be able to format here, so whatever format specifiers I want to have available for this class, I would have to use something like if format specifier equals equals whatever I want to support. So for example, let's keep it simple here and just use name to return self dot name and then elif format specifier equals age, then I could return self dot age, then I can also maybe do something like format specifier should be equal to both. I want to support this as well. Then I want to return I think this needs to be a string, by the way, um, then I can just return here uh, an F string with self 
dot name and self dot h. And then I can also say else if none of these is true, I can just return um, something else I can just return maybe a person or something or I can just return. Um, I can return this here, just a basic default representation if the format specifier is not um, not supported. So for example, here now I'm trying to print Greek it doesn't work. So I get the default here, I get the else branch. But if I say something like name, I can see I get Mike, if I say H, I get 30. If I say both, I get Mike 30. So you can just define a collection of format specifiers that you want to support for your specific class, and then you can define what the output should be. And of course, you can make this way more complex. Uh, and you can also raise an exception if it's not supported. So I can say here raise exception. Um, and if I provide something like this here, it would raise an exception. So this is also a way to do this. Now, this is a simple example, but let's look at something more useful, where a different representation might might make more sense. Let's say I have a class called coordinate 2d. So a two dimensional coordinate. And this coordinate has the following values when I define a constructor with x and y. So it's a two dimensional coordinate x value y value x coordinate y coordinate, we're just going to say self dot x equals x self dot y equals y. Um, and then we're going to have just a format function because what we want to be able to do now is we want to have the ordinary representation. But we also want to have the polar coordinate representation. So for this, we're going to have to import the math module. Because we're going to need some trigonometry here. Um, but we're going to define the dunder method format here. And we're going to say if format specification is equal to polar, we're just going to define this to be the format specifier. Now we're going to calculate the radius. Uh, by saying self dot x to the power of two plus self dot uh, y to the power of two. Um, and then we can, we can just actually I'm not gonna take it to the power of 0 0.5. I'm going to just use use math dot sqrt. Um, and then we can say theta, the angle is going to be math dot a 10 to self dot y self dot x. And then we can just return here the polar coordinates, uh, which are r equal to this is an f string r is equal to the radius uh, up until two decimal places and theta um, is going to be equal to theta up until two decimal places. And if we don't have this uh, specifier, we're just going to return the ordinary um, x y coordinate. So we're going to say f string x is equal to self dot x and curly brackets, of course, and y is equal to self dot y. And now we can go ahead and create a coordinate 2d here. We can say we have the coordinates 20 and 15. And then I can print the coordinate. And you can see here I get uh, just the object, uh, the object string here, because we didn't have a representation dunder method. Of course, I can add this as well here. So I can say def wrapper, and then I can just copy this here. Then we would get this representation here by default. Uh, but now I can go ahead and I can say f string, and then coordinate to d format specifier, something to get the default again, or we can say polar to get polar coordinates, which is very useful. Uh, if you define your own math class, for example, um, you can also by the way, trigger this formatting uh, with different functions. So you can also go ahead and say format. And then you can use uh, the coordinate and you can specify a string here polar to get the same effect. So yeah, this is how you define your own custom format specifiers for your Python classes. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.